Welcome to the Row by Row Garden Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the radio and the internet as well. Glad to have you this evening. We've got Mama Hoss in the house with a big red hat. How about that? Christmas, Christmas hat. hat. Christmas. Y'all Christmas see up. Christmas. Yep. Mm-hmm. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Man, I tell you what, we've got eight days left of Christmas. Everybody around here is in the Christmas spirit. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Yes, sir. It's wonderful. Since the time of the year, I love to see Christmas come and I love to see Christmas go. You know, we're not big on buying gifts for one another, but you know, boy, town has been inundated with people. It just, you, you don't even want to go to town for nothing. So it's a good thing that well, I've ordered most of what little bit I'm going to order online, and I hope other people have as well. Hint, hint. And uh, we got a good show for y'all tonight. We're talking about some interesting things, some things you need to be doing for winter, but we got some product updates as well. So let's, let's just dig on in. How about that? Okay. Yep. First of all, you know, I talked last week about some new things we was doing in our seed packs. I'll let you hold that one up right there. And I didn't have them. I forgot about it again. But I want to show you. We, got, we took uh, top 20 varieties, and we had these little labels made, and we're putting them inside of the seed packs. I got one here to show exactly. Yeah, you hold that. And we're putting these little labels in the seed packs so that when you get these, you'll have a label to plant there to know what variety you planted. As I mentioned last week, I'm notorious for planting something and forgetting which one I planted. We had a lot of feedback about these and it was all positive. Yeah. Now these really look nice. Cameron did a great job getting these things designed. Information's on the back of them. But we're just doing our top 20 varieties. Or, Why is that? Well... One of the reasons we want to do a test to see if you, the customer, like this because there's a little bit of expense to it. So we wanted to find out if it was going to be worthwhile to do. So we do appreciate the feedback from you guys letting us know if you like this or not. And we probably will not ever have all of our, our varieties done this, you know, done this way because things change, discontinued seeds, short supplies and things like that. But... If it is a hit with you, we could do probably 80% of our varieties. So let us know what you think there. You know, you should be getting them on into the spring. We have them packed in our newest inventory that's uh, in our seed room there. So these things probably are already rolling out. If not, they will be rolling out. And it's kind of sporadic which varieties. There's a couple sunflowers in there, some cucumbers, things like that. Tomatoes, summer squash. But that's the way it rolls right here. This is National Pickling Cucumber, and this is one of them. So you have that inside we seed. So when you get the seed packs, check and see if that is inside there. You may get lucky and get the, uh, the barker in with the seed packs. I think it's a great idea, but you know what? You, the customer, is the ultimate decider on things like this right here. So we want to try and see if you like it. If you do, we'll make it happen. If not, we won't. Simple as that. How about that? That's good. So one other thing that we're big into right now is growing lettuces indoors because, you know, it's December and although our winter garden is starting to pay off. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. You get a little, you get a little antsy yeah, over there on me. I'm Yep. So, but we're growing lettuces indoors like crazy. Let's show them what we got there, Mama Hoss. Now, this is a, a variety that we actually don't have for sale. It's a, a trial variety I did. It's a red oak leaf right there. And this one over here is a romaine that we have. I believe that's Coastal Star Romaine. And these six plants in this right here that we grow underneath the grow lights. And we grow this all the time. We chop it. We carry it to the house. We wash it. We put it in our salad spinner. And we got lettuce all the time for salads. You'd be surprised what little bit, this looks like a little bit of lettuce. You'd be surprised the harvest you get off this. So we're going to show you today pretty quickly exactly how we do this because anybody, and I say this, anybody can be growing this year round inside using our LED grow light system. Now this particular tray fits perfectly underneath our indoor growing system. So let's show Mama Hoss how we do that. We got the ones with the holes and without the holes. The, the kit comes with the one, I believe, I'm, I'm most positive with the hole, holes there. We're just using this to catch them. Yeah, because we're going to make a mess. 
So what we do is we use our, our pot and soil here, which is our Hoss pot and soil. And we like this one because it has a lot of added nutrients to it. It has worm castings in it. Of course, it has peat moss as its, peat moss as its basis. It has uh, green sand in it. It has kelp in it. It has some compost tea in it. It has mycorrhiza in it and also has dried molasses. Dried molasses is known for feeding the microbes in your soil. So this is one we like to use if we're actually growing out a vegetable. Now if we're using seed starting, I recommend using our just a regular seed starting mix because you don't need all that if you're just doing seed starting. We're going to try to get this where you all can see it. Just kind of dump it in there, roll it around a little bit more. All right. Good. Yeah, that's good. So you see how much we got there? And we just pat it down, just like that right there. And the two varieties we're going to plant together that one upside down is Coastal Star Romaine, which is our, which is our staple romaine variety right there. It's the one we love. If you like romaines, and if you don't like romaines, don't be growing them. But I particularly love romaines. And these two varieties here, both of those are pelleted. If you've ever planted a pellet seed, you appreciate the pelleted ones. Now what we normally do, you can plant all romains or you could just plant, let's, let's do three on each side. That's a lot that is over there. So these six plants over there. So if you've ever planted uh, lettuce seed, the, you know raw seeds can be a little aggravated because they're so small. So these pellet seeds make it real easy to plant by hand. So look here, let's just do this right here like that. Can we see that pretty good? All right, so we're going to plant two. And that second one there is an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. So we put two of them in there, and that's two of the romaines. And then we put, this is a Cherokee lettuce, which is a real good one. It has that same dark red color that, that oak leaf variety there has. But it's not an oak leaf. It's more of a salad bowl variety, I think. Same, same thing with it. Look at this nice pelleted seed there. And you don't get them pelleted seeds everywhere. And not all of our varieties are pelleted. I wish it was. We get pelleted when we can. Same thing. Two in there. What's that second one for? Insurance. Insurance. Just in case. When these things start coming up, if you got two of them that comes up, which most, most time will, just reach down there and pinch that extra one off. Now it's time to cover them up. There you go. Normally about a quarter to a half inch deep is all we plant them. Now the thing about lettuce seeds, they love 70 degree weather. So inside your house is perfect temperature for germination and also growing of lettuce seed. Lettuce seeds and growing out the mature lettuce. It doesn't get bitter on you like it does in the summertime when it's uh, outside and it gets hot. It's perfect. And that's the reason we like growing lettuces in the indoor growing system. We get them planted, we just simply take our watering can and wet it in. Now, one thing that I, I will tell you that I did do the other day that works out, if you got one of these trays, you can fill it up with water and just let it sit in there a little bit and the holes in the bottom of the tray, it will pull through there and wet all this right here real good. This watering can does about as good. And you can see we've already running water out the bottom there. They won't put just a little bit. You got any more water in there? That's a half a gallon. I didn't fill it all the way up. Yeah, I normally take it about twice, fill it up, and just wet it good. And now you got it nice and wet. Keep it wet in just a couple more days. You're going to, well, maybe three days. You're going to start seeing some seed pop through there. Now, once the seed pops through and you start seeing those leaves, then every seven days, what you want to do? You want to fertilize. You want to feed it. Yep. And how do you do that, Mama Hoss? You take one of these. Little tablets, and you take one of these and put it in a gallon. Well, I've been using that watering can. can like, yeah, show them that watering can right there. And I know the directions on this fertilizer says to use one per gallon. I think they was being a little bit on the safe side. I have done a lot of testing with that, and I've been putting one tablet per half gallon, and I haven't burned anything. It's been working out pretty good. So you've been putting a half? No, I've been putting a whole tablet in a, a half gallon water, the, the two liter watering can that we sell. 
Let me put it around this way. This dram, yes, they made water. And there's 14 tablets mm -hmm. in here. So you got plenty of that, right, that Dr. Joe's to make a crop with this right here. Put your tablet in there. You let it dissolve for maybe uh, five, ten minutes. And then you just water. Do that once every seven days. After it comes up. After it comes up. And then in between those seven days, you want to make sure it stays watered. I normally water about every other day. And, uh, and our break room stays about 70 degrees. Seems to be perfect. And look here, folks. You can grow that lettuce off over there in about 25 days. So you can keep you, you can keep your crop coming along right there, and you can have keep you one backing up, backed up planted from that when you, right when you get ready to harvest, and you can have it'll keep. How long will it keep in the refrigerator? You think? When we put it in the salad spinner and then spin it out, it keeps a good uh, week and a half. Oh yeah. So you got another one coming along after you harvest this one right here, and I have harvested these two. Two times. So you cut them off and they will flush back out and you get another harvest off of it. One time I did get three harvest off one, but it's unusual. Most of the time you get two harvest off of it pretty easy. So, you know, for nearly nothing, you can have your lettuce growing year round. Cool beans. Cool How about beans. that? Restocking. Let's talk about restock a little bit. We are getting some of our varieties that we have been out of stock on. We're getting them back in. These are two here that uh, I thought I would mention. Salad bowl green lettuce right there. We've been out of for a little bit. It's one of our main selling lettuces. It's real similar to that one right there, except it is, uh, it's not an oak leaf, and it is a green one. I use this one a lot. Also, scarlet kale. We got a good scarlet kale back in stock. I say a good one. It's a little more, I like the scarlet, the, uh, I like the scarlet kale we just got in better. I think it's got a little more vigor to it than uh, we're getting it from a different company. And I'm really excited about this scarlet kale. And I know a lot of y'all have been after it because we've been out of it for a while. So we have it in stock now? We do have it stocked now. We just got it in this week and got it packed. Wow. And I said, I got to mention that on the show. All right, so what we're going to talk about is things you should be doing in your garden this winter. But first of all, we got to talk about things we've already done in the garden this winter. Mm -hmm. You want to show them what you got? Ready? I'm ready. Are y'all ready to be wild? I went and found these this morning. Look at that. Mama Hoss is the carrot growing queen. I have mastered carrots. Yeah, so how did you do that? And you grew these in your raised beds. I grew them in my raised beds. I needed some soil in there because I had cleaned out um, I think I had a bunch of sunflowers in there twice so I took some pot and soil that was in my pots that I had flowers in uh -huh. and topped it off so I repurposed some pot and soil so it was really loose kind of dense high organic matter soil high organic matter I planted in there and the key to it was when did you plant them Oh, I knew you were just going to ask that. Was it October? Around the first one? I think it was sep end of September. End of September, okay. I think it was the end of September. Kept it watered till they came up. And then I kept, the main thing, I kept the weeds out of it, and I did thin them this year. I usually don't thin them, but I did thin them. Not heavily thin them, but I did thin them. I know that's a controversy to thin or not to thin. Well, that's the reason you made the big carrots, because you thin them out and give them room, you think? Is obviously worked. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, again. I think yeah. I'm gonna plant some more. You know, you can you can have carrots where we live in zone eight. I honestly think in the right situation with raised beds, you could have carrots all winter long. And I guarantee you, folks, right there, that's a lot better than what you grow, can get in the grocery store as so far I'm as on, taste. I'm gonna can these, and I'll do a video on how I can carrots because we use a lot of carrots mm -hmm. in our stews during the winter. Yep, that's a shame. We don't eat those tops, ain't it? Have you ever heard anybody eating carrot tops? No. I haven't either. Pretty. Yeah, you did a wonderful job there. I'll tell you, that's my weakness is growing carrots. Yeah. Ooh, I am not good at it at all. I'll give you some lessons. You're going to have to give me some lessons, yep. So let's talk about things you should be doing this time of year. Now, it's December. We all kind of got the holidays going on. We're not thinking a lot about garden, but there are some things you need to be doing in your garden right now. I just pulled up my okra. 
just pulled up your okra. Actually planted some lettuce. Yep. And lettuce is one of those things you can plant consecutively during wintertime and have it coming off. Even if you're not growing it indoors, you can grow it outdoors. Now, in the cold, cold weather, it may be a little more challenging, but you can still do it. And it's, it's wonderful to look at as well. We, I just enjoy growing lettuce. I could care less about growing lettuce in the summertime. It's kind of bitter. It's bitter. It just it scorches. It doesn't do well at all on the outside. But I love growing it in the wintertime. And I love growing it indoors because indoors is foolproof. The things that you should be thinking about doing right now in December in your garden is getting things organized a little bit. Now look here, I'm the world's worst. If you go out there and look at my garden shed and it's on my to-do list and I'll take me a Saturday here in the next couple of weeks or holiday, I don't have a lot going on. Now, I'm going to get up there and get things organized. But you know how it is when the garden season's over with, you kind of got things scattered around a little bit and your favorite tools are always up front and you've got those tools that you hadn't used in a long time that you don't use much anymore. Everything's kind of mixed together and it's very unorganized. Yeah, we had some new residents come and we had to move a bunch of garden stuff and it is a mess. Yep, so we had to, we had to move for uh, chops and bits, make them home and move some of our tools out of there. So I got to organize that and believe you me, I got a few wheel hose in my garden shed. Mm -hmm. But it's that time of year to get up there and organize. And one thing that I really noticed about me and I thought I'd share this with you all, there's a handful of those garden tools that you, that's your favorite ones, that you always reach in there and get. Look here, I got garden tools in my garden shed, and a bunch of them, because I've tested a lot of them over a period of time. But there's a handful that I always reach in there and get. So make sure that you got those handier, and those that you may find yourself not using. It's like that old shirt in your closet. It may be time to put it up. If you're not using it, don't let it take up good, valuable real estate. Put it up out of the way so it doesn't get in the way of you getting to your good tools. Or share it with somebody. Or share it with somebody. If you ain't using it, put it away. How about that? Another thing is take those tools. It's time to clean them and oil them up. Now, we always recommend you take that wood, take your light piece of sandpaper and go over it and get the, the, the roughness off of it. Put linseed oil on it. Now, one thing that I found over a period of years of doing this you got that old camping stove that you can pull out there. If you'll heat that linseed up a little bit, not till it's boiling or not to the point that it's going to burn you, but heat it up till it's real warm. And I like to use those painter's gloves or those mechanic gloves, those nitrate gloves. And I'll take me a rag and I'll get that linseed oil warm and then I'll soak down my handles. And it seems to absorb in there a lot better. I found that to be the best way to do it. And then when you get through, you simply take those gloves off and you don't have that linseed all over your hands. Mm -hmm. Metal parts. You want to make sure that you clean those down, sharpen them where they need to be, and maybe put a little coating of a light oil on those. Now, don't use linseed oil on the metal, but you can use something like WD-40 or something like that, a dry silicone. But you want to get the rust off if there's any. Get the rust off if you can and then put your coating on there. That way you'll feel better about your garden tools. Oh, shiny tools. Oh, shiny tools. You'll actually feel better. I feel better when I do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing for you all, we have horses, but you may not have horses. I also find it in wintertime. It's normally in January mm -hmm. on one of those dreary days. I will get out there and I get our saddles out, I get our harnesses out, and I'll, I'll clean them up and I'll oil them as well. It's due. And it's due. So it's a good time of year to do all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about your garden spots. Now you've got old residue left out there where your corn was or whatever like that, and you still got a little residue on top. You need to incorporate that residue back into your soil so that it is breaking down because those residues can harbor pathogens and insect eggs. So you want to get rid of those. And the best way to do that is to incorporate them into the soil because they break down a lot better in the soil. Those microbes and all that soil living organism starts to eat and decay away at that plant tissue. What plants do you want to pull up and move out? Give me an example of what you're talking about. Like tomatoes? Oh, yeah, yeah. All that kind of stuff should be out of the way, yeah. I would put tomatoes in the compost bin because we know tomatoes have worlds of diseases. Okay. Anything in the nightshade family, okra and nematodes, and okras don't decompose very well anyway. It makes big old woody stalks. Yes, Roselle hibiscus is a good one. Yeah. You want to put it in the compost bin. All those real woody stems or either anything in the nightshade family, get them out, put them in the compost bin. Other things that uh, that you can incorporate back in, 
such as flower stems like zinnias and stuff like that are real, not very woody, incorporate them back into the soil. That's corn stalks. Now I normally incorporate those back into the soil as well. It's time to do that soil test. Time to do your soil test and find out where you're at on that. The three things you want to check the most most for is pH, where you can adjust that. Now's a good time to find out where your pH is and you can adjust it come January when you get your soil test back and they'll be ready for those spring crops. Now, we see a lot of people on the row by row group talking about, I got my soil test back and I'm low with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, NPK. Really and truly, they don't ever measure nitrogen. Nitrogen is mobile and it didn't really measure on a soil test. But your potassium and your phosphorus does. Don't get bent out of hand about it like you would your pH. You can you can make preparations for that come springtime. Make notes of it if you're low or if you're high with your phosphorus or potassium. But you can adjust for that at planting time. You know, when you get ready to spring plant. Just pay attention to the pH. Yeah, if you're high in phosphorus, which a lot of them are, you know, you need to back off that. Or if you're low in potassium, you need more of it, you can make those preparations in when you're doing your pre plant fertilization and you can prepare for that. If you got a plot that's high in ph phosphorus, that's a good spot to put your corn because corn loves phosphorus. But anyhow, know of those soil tests and know how each section, if you got sections like we do, come out, can also help you plan what to plant where. So you would test each plot? I, I do. I really do. Yeah, especially if I got a very big plot. Should I be testing my raised beds? You know, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think you should. You haven't done that in a I long never, time. I don't know that I've ever done I have a lot of years ago, but it'd be a good idea to do that. Everything in your raised bed grows off so well because we add so much organic matter, but it would be a good idea to soil test there as well. Mm -hmm. Especially to get an I would like to know how it compares to my in-ground garden does. That'd be interesting. Another thing you can do, and I've done this in years past, say you got two plots out there, and one of them just really is an underperformer for you. Test it against a good plot and, and, and compare them and see what you're off and see what you can, see what additions you can make to that garden to make it up to par. That's a good way to do is do comparisons on that. Yeah, I need to test the carrot bed to see what. Mm -hmm. May have something. Compared you? to where I planted them last right. year. Yep. That's a good idea. Yep. Uh, amend your soil. Now, I, you can mend compost at any time. It's a good thing to do. I normally like, like to do that to probably three weeks before planting. So if I'm planting in springtime, for me, it would be a little too early for me to apply compost. You could, if you needed to, and you could plant a cover crop. Here in the south, you can still get by with planting something like rye or even mustard. Probably it's not going to come up quite as quick as it does in the fall. You still can get it up. You know, the next thing around the corner, we're going to be planting is potatoes. Mm -hmm. For us here, it's going to be around February 15th. For you people down in Zone it's 9, two months away. it's going to be here before we know it. People down in Zone 9 are going to be wanting to plant theirs in January. Wow. Yeah, so that's the next thing on our um, on our schedule is potatoes. Mm -hmm. So you want to think in mind, you know, preparing that spot where you're so going to plant potatoes. If you're going to plant potatoes, you wouldn't be planting a cover crop right now. Probably not. I'll tell you what I would do. I'd use a tarp on that. I would incorporate, if I got any organic matter, I'd incorporate it back into the soil, get my soil pretty much leveled off, tarp it. And that way, when my potato time got here, I could pull my tarp back and go at it. When you're ready. You're yep. ready to go. Tarps are ideal for keeping the weeds down. You don't want those winter weeds to get ahead of you and seed out because that's just going to cause more of a, a weed problem. Tarps are ideal for keeping those weeds at bay, smothered out, and they're also good for putting that bed on hold for when you need it. Especially if you know you're going to be in a kind of a time crunch when tater time comes, you can have that bed ready, tarp on there, and just simply roll it back. Plant your potatoes. What about mulching? Mulching potatoes? No, your beds instead of tarping. Oh, yeah, you could mulch, yeah. A lot of people use leaves. Mm -hmm. A lot of people this time of year, we have a lot of people talk about leaves. And leaves are good to add back into your soil. They break down really quick. And if you got a shredder to shred them up, they even break down mo quicker. Mo quicker. Mo quicker. What about wood chips? I don't like wood chips. Yep, I'd much rather have good compost. If you got wood chips, try to make compost with it. Wood chips is going to uh, take away from your soil, your nitrogen, and uh, I just it's not a 
No, I'd much rather have compost. We had a caller last week wanted to know your opinion on wood chips. Everybody's wanting to put wood chips in your garden. You're, you're, there's a lot better options out there than wood chips. Compost, leaves is good. Now, one thing I will say about leaves, leaves are loaded with tannic acids. Tannic acids releases over a period of time as those leaves decay, and they will cause your pH and your soil to drop some a little bit over a period of time. Nothing wrong with adding loads of leaves to your soil, incorporating them into the soil, letting them decompose, feed those microorganisms and those earthworms. But make sure about every two to three years you test the pH of your soil because over a period of time it will drop it down. Mm-hmm. Prime example of that, I'm going to go for a little tangent here. Uh, if you ever notice how native azaleas or azaleas do better in landscapes in, in bottoms, hardwood bottoms where there's a lot of leaves at, the reason for that is because azaleas love native soils. Native soils are about 4.5 to 5.5 in pH. And those leaves, when they come down off those trees, yeah. over a period of time, create this mat. They decompose or they create that, that ideal pH for things like azaleas. And they'll do the same thing to your garden spot over a period of time. Okay. Nothing to be alarmed about, just something to be aware of. Cover crops, we touched on, touched on that a minute. Still got time to get some of these unique ones in. If you've got something that you're going to plant late spring and you got you got a bare spot that you know is going to be uh, not used for six, eight, ten weeks, you still can get a cover crop in, a cool weather cover crop. Let's go back to tarps and the size of our tarps. Yep. So we have three different sizes. We've got a 40 by 50, we got a 30 by 40, and I think we got a 20 by 30. I think it's the smallest one. I will tell you this right here. Those bigger ones, you better have some help to look around. They get a little heavy and they get a little hard to move around. They cover a lot of ground. But if you're working by yourself, you probably want to go with that smaller tarp. It's a lot easier to handle. I think you'll thank me later for that one. Mm-hmm. Big tarps in your mind, when you're sitting in that recliner, it's a great idea. But when you get out there and start unfolding and moving around by yourself, you're going to wish, eh, there's something different here. So if you got help, that's fine. If not, go with the one of the smaller ones there. So let's talk about irrigation systems a little bit. Winterizing irrigation systems. Now I got in my garden, I've got these little risers that come up and I have these valves everywhere. So I could turn these, these uh, gate valves on and off. For each plot. For each plot. And I hook my drip irrigation up to that. Those things are notorious for freezing and busting. So usually when you're not here. Well, usually when I'm not here. So what I have done, I have... Uh, got and put a valve above all my irrigation system that feeds my garden, and I can turn off my entire garden. I can open up all my gate valves and drain the irrigation system. Now, your drip tape, if you still got drip tape or mainline tubing out in your garden, I think it's going to be fine. But if you got any filter regulator combos out there, I would take those up and put those inside and save them for the springtime because water can get trapped in those things sometimes. If you get a hard freeze, it can cause some rupture some of those plastic pieces the brass cycling. oh brass yeah brass is the worst for busted so if you get anything brass or anything like that make sure you you get plastic is the best but it's still the best but anything brass you want to make sure you get it drained and put up so there we have it folks there's some good things for you to get out there and concentrate on when you know it's kind of low garden season and it really, the average garden wouldn't take you but a couple of days to do all that. Yeah, yeah it's something I kind of enjoy doing. I want to do it by myself. I don't get, get my thoughts. I don't want nobody pushing me on that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Nagging. Nagging. I like to get up there and get in my own little, own little zone and organize it like I want it and do it at the pace I want Is to do it. Yeah, and have my dog with me. Have Maggie with me before I talk to her. Yeah, you got chopping bits. Up there. Chopping bits. I always want the chopping bit. Eating these things. Eating. Woo. Yep. So we got a corny joke of the week. We do. Woo. What? I've been not been privy to it, by the way. <laughs> what does the gingerbread man use to make his bed? Ah, and this is a gardening joke. No, no it's not a gardening. No, it's a Christmas, it's a Christmas joke. joke. Gingerbread man what used to make his bed. Cookie sheets. That is good. Cookie sheets. All right. Christmas gift ideas. Now, y'all, it's about eight days Christmas. I know it's just getting up on you. How about gift certificates? Gift certificates. The last ditch you can do a Chris uh, gift certificate. And this year. 
we got the ones that you can actually put yeah. in the stocking. If you order a gift certificate, we'll email you the certificate so you can email it to whoever you purchased it for or, or print put it, it off, a, yeah. wrap it in a box, put it in the stocking. Great last minute gifts. Yep. Everybody loves a Christmas gift certificate from Hoss. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. All right, folks. Potatoes. Potatoes. I forgot about potatoes. <laughs> potatoes. All right. So we still got potatoes in. We got them for pre-sale. If you haven't got your potatoes orders, go to the website and take a look at it. We are starting to go out of inventory on some of our unique varieties. I noticed the 25 pounds of the Irish cobbler is out of stock. We still got a pretty good, decent amount of inventory, but they are starting to sell out. So you want to make sure you get there and get your potatoes ordered and uh, we'll start getting them in the middle of january start getting them shipped out we're going to have two different ship dates middle of january and the middle of february if you live up north don't fret we'll get them to you as soon as weather so the permits. southern states are going to ship first southern states zone nine and ten is going to ship first and then we'll go from there so you'll get your taters in plenty of time to get them planted okay all right good deal Hope you enjoyed the show. Hope we give you some ideas what you can get out there and get done. Because you know what? We all need to get that kind of stuff done. Yours truly knows it best of anybody. I got some organization and cleaning up to do. Thank you very much for watching. Now it's time for you to get out there and get dirty.